Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so uh, what we did last class was to take a look at the impedance tube technique and we uh, have the solution and we constructed the uh, a general expression for the amplitude and phase for traveling waves and uh, then we uh, took a look at how the uh, solutions, solution here is the amplitude and the <coughs> phase distributions, uh, how the solutions were for various values of uh, admittance and we looked at how things will change for real part of admittance and we also looked at how things would change for the imaginary part of admittance. Now the uh, uh, next thing to, uh, I mean if I were a mechanical engineer I will be very satisfied with this because I know how much power is absorbed or how much power is given out and I will leave it here. <coughs> but working in thermoacoustics you have to worry about <coughs> stability, so that is the uh, big issue here. So our job is to predict stability from this information we obtained. So I think uh, uh, what I will do is to give a, a simple example where we can try to co connect the links between the admittance and the stability. I will just give a small example but uh, <coughs> it is not like this is a representative example or something uh, but you can try to um, see what happens and from there we can maybe do more complicated problems in the examination or something. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, just to emphasize. Uh, we said that omega uh, uh, the natural I mean the frequency or we call it also eigenvalue, eigenvalue means the unique values for which there are solutions. So this is uh, complex in general, so let me ask somebody, uh, yeah Deepak, you are Deepak, right? uh, so what does the real part of uh, omega mean and what does the imaginary part of omega mean or should we use both or should we use only the real part? For what? Amplitude. Ah. And what, what does the imaginary, what is it used for? Manu, what? Use the phase damping. Yeah, the uh, 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 omega imaginary indicates the growth or decay. Uh, of the of the oscillations and omega real indicates the periodic part and uh, I have spoken about it already but let me just emphasize it again because this is perhaps the most important thing in this class. So uh, omega equal to omega real plus i times omega imaginary, so e times i omega t equal to e times i omega real t times e times i times i times omega imaginary t, i times i is uh, minus 1, so we can rewrite this as e power i omega real t times e power minus omega imaginary t. So this is the periodic part, this is the growth or decay. <coughs> and we saw from acoustic analogy that uh, if energy is coming in from the boundaries, acoustic oscillations, uh, the, the net energy of the system, acoustic energy, whatever we called acoustic energy can grow or, or if it goes out of the system it can decay. So now we need to look at uh, how you can work this out, In uh, that was in a um, hand waving sense but can we get expression for, expression for this growth rate or decay rate, so that is the next thing that we are going to look at. So we looked at the problem. Uh, of a simple pipe which is closed at both ends and did you get any uh, growth or decay for the system? We did not, so we got uh, did real eigenvalues right, what are the eigenvalues for this system? Yeah, n, n lambda by 2, so uh, you had to fit multiples of lambda by 2 in this, in, in the pipe, so the frequencies went like 
n c over 2 l the frequencies we are going like n c over 2 l which is a purely real number. So, that means, if you could manage to set up oscillations in a pipe somehow mysteriously, we could do it by connecting a loudspeaker, keep it on and then at some point you turn the loudspeaker off and then the oscillations will continue to stay there forever. In reality, it does not exist right, I mean you can try to do this experiment, there will always be losses. So, let us think of a system where there are small losses and small losses help me to do the algebra easily, in reality the losses can be big as well. So, so this is a, a, a problem and I have a companion problem in which I have perfectly closed here. So, somehow magically I have a perfect and you have a perfectly rigid uh, huge block being cemented here or something and I have this pipe of same length, but let us say I put a small hole or something. So, so it is almost close, but there is some small admittance. So, the here you have velocity exactly 0, u prime equal to 0. Here I will have u prime is small. So, some amount of sound is quote unquote leaked out to something. So, we will not worry about what happens when the sound is leaked out to the outside. We will just restrict to what is inside in terms of the admittance and then we will try to link that with the growth rate. That means, the problem is in this first problem when I have perfectly closed uh, conditions, uh, I, if I have some oscillation there, let us say I have oscillations with amplitude 10 Pascals or something and if I do not turn, turn on the speaker, I just leave the oscillation to 10 Pascal, it will continue to stay at 10 Pascal forever. But if some amount is leaking, will the 10 Pascals come down, it will die down slowly, <coughs> what is the rate at which it dies down? So, from uh, this framework it seems like we can fit the exponential decay to it and then how would you uh, relate that to the whatever is leaking out. On the contrary, if you had a flame, let us say we have a small flame and the flame amplifies the incoming disturbance, then you can have a growth and let us say the flame is uh, uh, a small disturbance am amplifying it a little bit, then can you uh, find expression for the uh, growth rate in this case in terms of the admittance of the flame. So, that is the question. I hope the question is clear to everyone. Okay. So, we need a solution and we have the solution for pressure which is from A e power i k x plus B e power minus i k x and we know by now how to get the expression for acoustic velocity which is or the particle velocity which is by uh, using the linearized momentum equation or momentum equation for small perturbation. So, you get the velocity and then apply the appropriate boundary conditions, right? Yeah. Ah, yes, Vishnu. Uh, yeah, for acoustic velocity, we generally take it as uh, it does a adiabatic uh, traveling waves, but when we add energy, uh, there is a, uh, that velocity will change, no? Uh, that is, if you are talking about a small particle and if you are being able to add energy uh, as in uh, by heat energy or something to the particle but we are not speaking about adding energy there, we are speaking about <coughs> uh, leaking in acoustic wave. So, in terms of a intensity flux coming in at the boundary, so that is the way we are thinking about adding energy. We are not really speaking about adding energy in a microscopic sense, which uh, yes, uh, for example, if you are adding heat, you would have, uh, you would change this adiabatic condition and then by definition, the heat release rate or the heat addition rate to the particle has to appear in the picture. In fact, uh, uh, the amount of uh, acoustic energy added would be the correlation between pressure and heat release we will show later. But at the moment, uh, uh, so that is like a volumetric driving. So, there is uh, a heat release taking place in a volume and how much is the acoustic energy created in this volume wherever the heat release happens. Flame may be thin, but whatever in that flame zone. But here we are speaking about uh, some wave being pushed in from infiltrated in I think that is some word we read in newspaper. So, from outside the sound is created. So, we are not worried about creating sound itself. Somehow, there is something here and you send in here it could be um, sound from outside or it could be a loudspeaker coming in or the other problem we the way we look at it is we are set up a standing wave sound already exists we are looking at how it leaks out. So, this question uh, we are sidestepping for the moment, but that is a central question to the course. So, when we finish all these things, we will come back to how the uh, heat added to a particle uh, uh, changes the acoustic energy and 
uh, everything else okay any other question okay. so the uh, boundary condition uh, here would be u hat over p hat over rho c equal to y and I have put the script y which would mean this is non dimensional admittance and uh, it is very convenient to work in terms of non dimensional admittance as you would see that is the reason we do and here it is perfectly rigid that means u hat equal to 0 and in this companion problem again I have rigid and rigid so here also u hat is equal to 0 and my coordinate system is such that uh, this equal to x equal to 0 and uh, I would uh, call this x equal to L. So uh, we are solving for the eigenvalue and let us say eigenvalue of this problem is k and the eigenvalue here is k naught. And you can already see the conspiracy. We will try to express k in terms of k naught. Then uh, uh, some simplification will happen. So we say that k is k naught plus k prime, which is why I spoken. I started with a rigid plate and then said there's a small departure from that, and then the algebra becomes simple. So if you have a expression, it's easy to explain results, and then you can move to solving a more complex problem numerically and and so on. So I hope the problem is set up clearly. It's a well-defined problem. So the <coughs> pressure p hat equal to it's a complex amplitude a e power i k x plus b e power minus i k x and if you have a rigid end at x equal to zero then what happens a will be equal to b right uh, so uh, u hat is zero and u hat would be like um, a minus b. So you should get p hat equal to 2a cos kx. You can write this as e power i kx, uh, take the a out. So e power i kx plus e power minus i kx multiply and divide by 2 and then you can call the exponential term as cos kx and there is a 2 outside. And uh, You had can you derive an expression for this? Can you work out I mean, rather than just copy? I will write the answer, just see if you get it. So if you uh, take dp by dx. Uh, equal to i omega u hat and from there you can get this. Is this okay? Can you just check if there are any sign mistakes or something? I think there should be a minus. You are getting the same answer? Okay. I tell y that is admittance equal to minus i sin k l divided by cos k l equal to minus i tan k l okay. So uh, y the non dimensional admittance consists of real and imaginary part and we will try to separate out the real and imaginary part. And I will say this k equal to k naught plus k prime, where k naught is the eigenvalue of the corresponding closed closed duct. K naught is the eigen eigenvalue of this closed closed duct. So this will be tan k naught plus k 
a prime times l this could be expanded out as minus i times tan k naught l plus tan k prime l divided by and at this point I have not made any assumptions about what sort of uh, quantity is k prime. So, in general it is a complex quantity and only assumption I am making is that um, k prime is very small or the magnitude of k prime is very small compared to k naught so that I can do the uh, Taylor expansion kind of thing. So, both k real and k imaginary would be small compared to the value of k naught. So, that is the only assumption that I am making, but otherwise it is in general complex. So, uh, now you can see why I made this assumption that or, or the separation that k is k naught plus k prime. So, you can uh, tan k naught l will be uh, 0 uh, because velocity is 0 at this end and uh, so therefore, you can write this as minus i tan k prime l which I can further sim simplify as which if I expand out would be minus k real prime times l minus i k prime imaginary times l uh, times i. So, this if I multiply out would be k imaginary l this would be minus i times k real times l. I will pause for a moment to let you verify if this is indeed correct because otherwise the answer would be wrong. Correct, okay, fantastic. So, uh, so, this is y real plus y imaginary. So, we can actually write a uh, separate formulas for y real and y imaginary. So, So, we can write this as two real equations this complex equation y real in terms of k imaginary and y imaginary in terms of k real. So, we wanted to first take a look at uh, the uh, growth or attenuation. So, we, for that we need to look at the k imaginary right. So, k imaginary is nothing but omega imaginary over c times l. So, <coughs> you can get omega imaginary would be equal to y real multiplied by c over l which we can think of as l over c is like a characteristic time right. What is l over c? l over c is the time required for a sound wave to traverse through the length of the pipe. So, that is a characteristic time tau equal to tau it is a natural time scale in our problem because we have a length l and the sound wave is going. So, l over c is the time taken for the sound wave to come in. <coughs> so, <coughs> if you look at our term e power i omega t <coughs> 
we have <coughs> we have written here that e power i omega t was equal to e power i omega real t times e power minus omega imaginary t. So, your exponential um, growth or decay comes straight out in terms of y real. So, if y real is a positive quantity that would mean that um, we remember from last class that that is what does it mean? It's energy going from left to left to right, right. So, energy is going from here out. So, you should have a decay and that is what you are getting and if y real is negative energy is coming in this direction and therefore, you will have uh, it should be something like a flame which drives then you have or, or a loudspeaker whatever. So, you should be having uh, growth if uh, you have the opposite sign. So, is this part uh, clear at this point? So, the other question um, that is still to be dealt with is what does y imaginary mean? There is a question I think you guys asked earlier and so you can see the answer by writing it out. <coughs> So, get different colors. This equation k prime real times L equal to minus y imaginary. So, k equal to k naught minus uh, this k prime is uh, k minus k naught. So, I can uh, bring the k naught to the other side, right? K prime equal to uh, four. K equal to k naught plus k prime. So that's what I did. So if you know k prime, you can uh, bring k naught to the other side. Except that we are only dealing with the real part here. <coughs> this would be equal to. 2 pi f naught over c minus y imaginary over l this and k would be 2 pi s f over c. So, if you multiply out you will get f equal to f naught minus y imaginary over 2 pi. tan theta if theta is small goes like theta. But so, I am assuming that k prime l is small quantity. But theta if you say theta is small that, that makes that statement makes sense only if theta is real. No, you can uh, have an expansion of sin theta is what, uh, what is the expansion theta minus theta cube plus theta per phi that holds for a general complex thing. The magnitude of theta should be small that is all. There is some um, convergence criteria I think it should converge uh, it will it will converge unconditionally. I think. It, it really works for small uh, and there is no restraint on real or complex. Uh, the question here is that whether this uh, expansion for tan theta in terms of theta would work for uh, complex numbers and the answer is it, it will. Okay, so now back to this. So f we said that equal to f not minus y imaginary over two pi. So if y imaginary is positive, that means f will come down. That means you can actually pack more waves into it. And if uh, y is negative, f increases. That means uh, uh, fit less number of waves or something like. That. I mean, it's not like many more waves, but it stretches that way or this way. So, I hope this answers the question and it stretches this way or that way depending on where exactly the reflection happens. Uh, so, uh, so, this is so, this is a concern in terms of 
what did the actual frequency change, but more importantly if you speak about the growth rate I think this term is tells the whole story. So we can relate the impedance or, or the admittance of the boundary to what is uh, the standing wave uh, being uh, growing in time or decaying in time okay I think it is very straightforward. Any questions? I will write a general result. So, we well being applied to this particular problem. call this as n1 and this is n2. So this is the acoustic energy corollary and we will time average this so that the triangle bracket would mean time average. So if we do this let us we can write it of the form. E power minus two this uh, is zero because we said at one it is a perfectly rigid condition. So uh, if you uh, if you differentiate this you will get So we can uh, write this as 2 omega imaginary equal to y real times pre prime RMS square. Uh, oh, I forgot the area. So this times A times A divided by A naught. So you may find this kind of expressions in some books papers. So with this exercise I try to uh, uh, tell you the reason why we are interested in measuring admittance of uh, flames and so on because uh, one thing it will the direction would be determined by the sign of the real part of admittance and also it translates to growth rate or decay rate. Any questions? If there are no questions I wish to move to the next topic which is acoustic attenuation. Uh, we uh, wrote our solution in terms of F and G and we said uh, acoustic pressure is F of X plus CT and acoustic velocity is or, or F of X minus CT and acoustic uh, and uh, that, that was the right running wave and there was a left running wave G of X plus CT and similarly we wrote exponent for velocity as 1 over rho C times F of X minus CT minus G of X plus CT. And by definition this wave does not change shape and this is not able to take care of any uh, attenuation of the wave and, and so on. Uh, but in reality attenuation does happen and sometimes it deliberately happens and one uh, so since we are in a combustion instability class let us speak about uh, how what would be the practical means to uh, have attenuation in a uh, combustor. 
So let us think about uh, most of your aerospace students. So we have a, a solid rocket motor and uh, it does have uh, solid rocket motors are very prone to instability and you have to have some kind of countermeasure or some kind of safety against instabilities occurring and I guess some of you who did the propulsion class would know what is the easiest thing to do to get rid of instability. Yeah, add aluminum and aluminum is added anyway to a solid propellant uh, to increase the performance because metals give high specific impulse and uh, so aluminum also burns and forms uh, alumina which is initially molten and as it goes through the nozzle it may start solidifying. These alumina particles uh, have a certain size uh, and they have a certain drag because the particles when they are in a sound field the particle will try to move along with the sound field. So sound field will drag the particle and in the process the sound will lose some uh, energy because when it is trying to drag the particle that means it is giving some of its energy to the particle or the droplet and it is giving energy so it is actually losing and the particle is gaining energy and if there are lots of particles if it is like one particle in the sound wave it probably does not matter you can think of it as one wave coupling but if there are very large number of particles the sound uh, will start uh, the sound wave or the acoustic field will start losing some amount of energy so it is like now a two way transfer. So this would lead to acoustic at, uh, attenuation and that is what the uh, solid propellant uh, motor designers try to make use of as some kind of insurance or protection against combustion instability and you must have seen uh, attenuation in some form of the other for example if it is raining and you shout uh, I mean the rain drops will attenuate the uh, sounds and, and you, you will feel uh, that you really have to shout loud or if you are attending an open, uh, open air concert and the rain drops are coming you would uh, suddenly feel a reduction in the volume. Uh, of course there are two effects that you hear simultaneously only the sound of the rain itself but the rain drops take away it damp the oscillations. Uh, the other example of damping I can think of is, is uh, if any of you are musicians here uh, when the music band practices uh, when they set up the instruments in the uh, concert hall and they will set the amplitudes at uh, or the amplifier at certain level and everything would be quite loud but then they uh, wait for the so they will set up everything tune the instruments and make sure everything is okay and then when people come in and then they start playing and the sound level won't be enough at all it almost like the volume went away somewhere so the people and their clothes are damping uh, uh, so they take away the energy so actually you have to jack up the uh, ampli amplifier once the people come in so there are a lot of uh, ways you can uh, uh, a lot of uh, places where you see damping uh, you see in um, concert halls there are special panels like we have here in the studio you see this panels they are meant to damp because these holes they actually absorb the sound and, uh, and, and take away some energy from the uh, incident sound field. So there the are a lot of damping so we will not look at a general case but we look at attenuation happening to one dimensional uh, waves standing waves and we will see uh, how uh, this can be uh, studied and a simple way to think of it is if you have a uh, tube filled with pebbles or something or packed bed uh, some of you with chemical engineering uh, 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 background would know what is a packed bed packed bed is nothing but a column in which lot of packings packings are like material uh, like pebbles or something but they have uh, the good packings have high void fraction that means a lot of free space and they are made to improve the contact between uh, let us say two fluids or something like that. So uh, let us say you have you can think of a tube filled with foam or packing or something like that and that would be a good uh, uh, good example for a only attenuated travelling wave or you can other example is to think of a droplet laden gas inside a tube okay. Attenuation will depend on the medium and its properties and uh, sometimes the flow that is set up and even if there is nothing inside there will be attenuation because the molecules uh, have vibrational relaxation and so on and they take away the energy. So for example uh, I mean if you have a simple tube uh, even, even in that the air itself will absorb and in fact you would notice that um, on humid days there will be more attenuation compared to uh, days which are dry. So uh, we will not speak or go in detail about what causes attenuation but we will uh, describe attenuated wave I, I think I will restrict my objectives just to 
describe attenuated wave and uh, describe how the amplitude variation is, how the phase variation is, but then the attenuation itself is dependent on uh, the physical phenomena. For example, if it is a droplet laden gas uh, like in the case of solid rocket motor, then it, it is related to the droplets properties uh, uh, and the, uh, the size of the droplet for example, certainly affects the drag right in through the Reynolds number and so on and, and the frequency will come into play because uh, yeah, the time scales involved are there. So now the straw hull number, Reynolds number, Stokes number, those numbers will come into play. In fact, uh, when you use a, uh, when you try to design a solid rocket motor, ideally we would like to adjust the aluminum size such that the alumina droplet size would be the correct size needed to damp the oscillations. For every frequency you would need a certain particular droplet size distribution to damp the oscillation. So uh, ideally a good designers, uh, I do not know whether they will work with the equation or they go by feel, but they will actually tweak, th this is one parameter which is available for tweaking and that is why uh, whatever works for a rocket of a certain size may not work for a rocket of another size. For example, if you have a rocket of certain size, let us say 10 meter and you uh, everything works fine and the same rocket with the same propellant and same diameter you just extend into double and then suddenly it may uh, develop, uh, it, there have been cases where it suddenly gives instability and that is because the uh, uh, droplet size was just fine to kill the earlier frequency, now the frequency has come to be a lower value and now uh, this uh, aluminum uh, size that you have which results in certain alumina size, droplet size that is not tuned to attenuate frequencies in this uh, uh, big motor or, or vice versa. So uh, uh, yes, this is an important thing uh, and uh, I will not attempt to model that aspect, but I will talk about a description of the standing wave in presence of alumina uh, or in the presence of part, uh, particles or, or, or drag. So if there is attenuation, how will the wave look like, what will be the structure. Now uh, doing that, uh, you see connecting that attenuation to your specific system depends on um, the specific system's properties. I hope it is clear. I gave a very long answer for a short question, but it is a uh, tricky point. We can, uh, we, can, we can discuss in private. I have worked out some such problems in the past for my research. Now, yeah, I forgot to mention uh, another case where attenuation is very important is when you are talking about propagation in narrow tubes or narrow ducts. For example, in uh, thermoacoustic engines, uh, thermoacoustic engine is a device where you use a temperature gradient across a thing called stack which is a set of plates and use that to drive sound in the engine. So in that the stack has small plates which are narrowly spaced, so their attenuation is quite important. So in general when you have a, a narrow ducts, attenuation gets very important. So we will study this in an idealized geometry and a good description of this is given in the textbook by Kinsler and Frey. I is the incident wave, R is the reflected wave and let us say we have some kind of sound source here. It can be a piston moving back and forth or a loudspeaker or something like that. Uh, so we have, let us for the present assume that we have a perfect termination or a perfectly rigid termination that means the amplitude of the incident wave is equal to the amplitude of reflected wave. Uh, in the earlier problem we saw A minus B equal to 0, A equal to B, that kind of situation. So uh, the sound source supplies the acoustic power which will be consumed in the acoustic absorption. So we will uh, uh, look at such a case. So we will not look at a uh, complex omega, so we will set up a real omega that means there is a sound source and we have cross the transients and we are reaching some kind of steady standing waves, stationary standing waves. 
so there will be no growth or decay of oscillation that means omega can be chosen to be real. But we look at uh, the wave number which can be complex that means the wave uh, in the standing wave you will not have same maximas for all the maximas that can be growing or decaying and that will count in terms of wave number. Let me write these things down. But we will have a complex k, we will have a complex wave number. <coughs> so, we will uh, write this complex number as something real plus something imaginary. So, <coughs> let us call the wave number is k tilde which is k minus i alpha and it will be clear why it is convenient to choose such a form. So now we will think of uh, how to write how to write the expression for the standing wave. So we'll write it first for right running wave and then for left running wave. So that must be of the form p naught e power i times omega t minus k tilde x. Now I'll substitute this expansion for k tilde. So, this would be p naught e power i times omega t minus this would be p naught e power times minus times minus is plus i times i is minus 1. So, this would be e power minus alpha x. So, this is a right running wave. So, when a wave is running to the right, it should decay to the right. Left side should have more amplitude than right side and uh, that is. So, we will assume alpha is positive and then uh, this description looks good for a right running wave. Now, we will have to look at a left running wave in the same manner just another color. So, it will be uh, will go like p naught e power i times omega t plus k tilde x here. So, this would be p naught e power i times omega t plus k minus i alpha times x. So, this would be p naught e, e power i times omega t plus k x times e power i times i is minus 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 e power alpha x. So, a left running wave uh, is what is described here. So, it will appear as if it is growing, but if you think about a wave going from right to left, it is actually decaying. So, this decays to the left, this decays to the right. So, it is a little tricky. So, the uh, total pressure can be written as some of these two things. Total pressure. So, I will give you some um, homework. Uh, 
at this point because I do not think you will have time to complete it. Uh, we can look at it uh, next class. So, first thing would be derive an expression for the uh, pressure amplitude distribution. So, and you uh, hat and second thing would be make plots and I will uh, show you some sample plots now. So, over here is a would be a plot of uh, pressure amplitude uh, versus distance and when you write k x it is non dimensional because k is wave number and this would be the uh, plot of phase. So, please make a uh, try to calculate this I have done it using excel which is uh, quite simple and uh, but you can write your program in fortran or c or matlab or anything of that sort and and try to uh, uh, plot and um, this is how the acoustic velocity would look like and I have again normalized the velocity and pressure with their values at x equal to 0 and uh, last thing try to see if this interpretation of phase uh, agrees with what you think because if you have a uh, if you have a sound source here and energy is coming to it and the left turning wave is decaying and, and uh, so eventually it will come here and then what is going here will also start decaying uh, as, as you come here. So, in near the sound source here it will almost be like a traveling wave because you had a wave left turning wave coming here and then it reached here and it lost lot of its amplitude and then it starts coming as a right turning wave and by and it's again continuing to get attenuated. So, here it will be predominantly a left turning wave if it is damped well and as you come more towards this you will have uh, both of them coming and then the phase should be such that we have to look at the phase. So, the particles here should vibrate first before the particles here are moving. So, because the energy flow is in this direction. So, we we had some intuitive way of understanding how the phase relates to the direction of uh, intensity flow and see if this is consistent with that uh, and uh, please do this at home then we can discuss this tomorrow. Mm -hmm.